the human body hosts a huge number of microbes in various ecosystems and uh, it differs the nature of the microbes is not the same it's like your thumbprint we have our own uh, characteristics in the same family you may have similar features due to the genetics and the epigenetics due to the dietary factors as well and in the same individual depending on where you live for example when you're traveling you might find that your uh, body pattern changes the smell of your sweat changes the uh, stool pattern changes how you feel the mood changes so these are related to the impact of the gut microbiota changing when you travel the same happens when you take antibiotics as well uh, the number of microbes in the human body is nearly 10 times that of the somatic cells so on the skin there are 10 to the power of 12 in the mouth there are 10 to the power of 10 in the intestinal tract there's a maximum 10 to the power of 14 now and uh, in the genital tract as well uh, you have uh, similar numbers as the skin there are more than 500 species most of them are anaerobic and there are trillions of bacteria as i said it's more than the cell count in the body over 99 percent is contributed by 30 to 40 species and having a balance is important for healthy intestinal function as well as nutrition and it also has a critical role in immune development and response as well as as we will discuss the gut brain axis it has a role in our uh, long-term health and our interactions so the beneficial functions of the intestinal microbiota come from various aspects of it so we can subdivide into metabolic where the microbiota interact with the prebiotic like substances in the diet and we form short chain fatty acids the short chain fatty acids have both local effects in acidifying the stool making the gut bacteria healthier in inhibiting the other bacteria which are pathogenic by reducing the ph and also they function in many cases as uh, local neurotransmitter like effects and there is a feedback mechanism through the vagus which we will discuss as well we have energy salvage so it tends to break down the prebiotics which are not digested in any other part and we may salvage some energy we may help in vitamin synthesis we must have heard of the vitamin uh, b12 synthesis and vitamin k synthesis as well in the distal colon we have mineral absorption which is facilitated so calcium absorption is ph dependent and the lactose in the diet which is not absorbed goes to the distal intestines it has a role in mineral absorption as well with the inter interaction with the probiot my microbiota the trophic function is very interesting so there are two aspects to it one it balances the proliferation and differentiation of the colonic epithelial cells so by maintaining a healthy balance it's able to maintain the mucus film layer the thickness of the mucus film layer and as well as the health of the uh, mucosa so when we talk of uh, premature babies for example this health is disturbed so the mucosal layer is not protecting enough the toll like receptors are activated and this is one of the reasons why necrotizing enterocolitis is more common when there is dysbiosis there is also proliferation of intraepithelial lymphocytes this balances the helper 1 helper 2 balance which leads to uh, fighting infection versus having an inflammatory response as you know if the milieu is uh, disturbed and you have more inflammation we have cytokine production these cytokines may cross the blood brain barrier and not only do they impact the local gut health they also may impact the brain development that's why the risk of necrotizing enterocolitis with uh, impaired brain development is fairly high as well uh, the third aspect is a protective function it uh, affects colonization by the pathogenic bacteria by different mechanisms both as a decoy mechanism by competition with the receptors for the bacteria by changing the ph for example uh, where the pathogens are inhibited while these bacteria thrive uh, it also stimulates the production of substances which inhibit pathogen addition like iga and mucins there is competition for receptors and nutrients as well so it's interesting to think of gut microbiota impacting our long-term outcome and this is a very important concept when it comes to talking about cesarean delivery and how the gut microbiota which forms after cesarean delivery may impact your long-term outcome so we have an alteration of the gut paracrine and neuroendocrine mechanisms and when we talk of neuroendocrine mechanisms we are talking of the stress hormones the pituitary uh, effect on acth the cortisol feedback mechanism so as you know the stress hormones if they are high it affects your long term health and paracrine mechanisms i told you about the effect of the short chain fatty acids on the feedback these feedback mechanisms happen through the enteric nervous system excitability as well as the vagus nerve which innervates intestine as well as it innervates the autonomic nervous system impacting on the heart the blood pressure and so on and the vagus obviously uh, has uh, afferents going into the brain stem as well 
There is effect on the central nervous system programming through the vagus as well as the locally produced neurotransmitters. There is modification of the immune system. I mentioned about the balance of the pro and anti-inflammatory effects, impact on cell repair, apoptosis, etc., which have impact on the long-term health. So, for example, inflammatory bowel disease may happen if your balance is disturbed. In the newborn period, we are talking of colic, where there is a excess inflammation or the baby's ability to contain is reduced. So this tolerant versus disruptive milieu is a result of the gut microbiota. So this is how it impacts long-term health. And by through uh, this central nervous system effect, uh, you, your eating abilities, your satiety, the stress hormone levels, these are impacted. And that's why you have the higher risk of diabetes, obesity, and as an indirect effect on heart disease as well. So this is summarizing the same. I mean, we have the human diet the carbohydrate, which is the uh, prebiotic part, the lactose, the fructooligosaccharide, the lactooligosaccharides that we consume, the fat and the protein, of course, and um, the gut microbiota, whatever it is there, there may be factors that modify it as well. So this interacts and it may lead to various effects, both positive and negative, depending on what kind of change you have. So psychological diseases, autism, impact on intelligence. So these are very crucial in children. Impact on metabolic diseases, I told you about obesity, hypertension, diabetes, inflammatory bowel disease, and of course, immune disease as well, asthma, allergy, and so on.